Hey guys, what's up? It's 8-Bit Eric and today's original content. God, I'm the most original guy on YouTube. Nobody else does exactly what I do. I am the Switch channel to go to. Today we are going to talk about some of those Nintendo Switch games that just kind of just flat out disappointed you. Whether they weren't exactly what you were expecting, maybe a little underwhelming, or just flat out just sucked. Now, this list is actually based not just on my opinions of games that disappointed me, but yours. Yes, I asked you guys on Twitter and Facebook and different social medias what Switch games disappointed you. So let's go ahead and share our answers today in today's video. Let's begin. So yes, the Nintendo Switch has hundreds of games already available across the eShop and physical. There's some pretty good ones, you know, you got the Mario Odysseys, the Breath of the Wilds, some pretty good first party titles, and then you got third party titles that are solid, and then you got some really good indie titles, but then you have those few that kind of just, you were excited to get them, you went to the store, you put it in, you played it, and after a while you're like, yeah, um... This game is uh, kind of meh. Well, today's list is going to be derived from my own personal list as well as from you guys. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. The first game that I am personally going to talk about is Tumble Seed. Now, I heard a lot of stuff about this game when it first came out. It was supposed to be like an RPG roguelike type of game where you control a little character using both ends of your, uh, I guess, screen, like a little platform for them to balance on while avoiding holes and trying not to die. And if you die, you basically start all over. It pretty much was the hardest Switch game that I've ever played, probably to this day. And uh, I just could not get behind it. There was just something about it being super punishing that I was like, you know what? This isn't even fun anymore. Now, I'm not going to say that it's a badly developed game, but it's a game that really gives no, I guess, sympathy towards how much you suck. And I've never heard of anybody being good at this game at all. I it just, to me, I was like, man, I, I have this game. I can't get anywhere in it. And it's not even like a what if. It's just all based on luck, in my opinion, because it's also procedurally generated. So you're never going to play the same level twice. The holes could be hit or miss. There's different power-up locations. Overall, I, I mean, the idea and concept of it was, I guess, potential. Like, it had a lot of potential, but it just kind of fell a little flat for me. And I, honestly, after reviewing it, I never really picked it back up and played it ever again. Now, this one is one that I actually really wanted to play because it was being advertised as a old school collect-a-thon. Now this is Snake Pass and to be honest there's nothing really like it on the Nintendo Switch. You control a snake that you can lift his head up and you use motion. You wiggle the analog stick and make him wiggle a lot faster to move around and these stages are like kind of mini 3D platforming type of stages that have a variety of obstacles and items that you collect and a you know different stuff like that and it does have a little old school feel with regards to the soundtrack and the way it looks and stuff and it kept me entertained for quite a little bit but again another game where it just it was just it felt like such a hassle to honestly control a game it was so frustrating at times and really collecting the stuff in the levels had no absolute purpose other than for your own personal achievement for you to i guess be a completionist but nothing additional really lo uh unlocked at all in this game this was also available on the other platforms and i think all around it was met with mediocrity um the whole idea of Snake Pass seemed like a good idea. The characters are charming and cute. The game is colorful. But also the Switch port seemed a little bit more blurry and bad to look at compared to the other ones. Of course, it was an inferior port graphically wise for the Switch. They had to make a lot of exceptions to it. I think it even came out a little bit later than the other versions. And this was one of the earlier third party games on the Nintendo Switch. So I think at the time, a lot of things graphical wise might still have been being ironed out. But I really feel that this game didn't live up to the potential that was being advertised. And honestly, 
I wouldn't even go back to play it anymore and wouldn't really recommend anybody to check it out this point in time because of how many more superior games that are out there right now. Now, Slime Son was another game that initial impression, I was like, wow, this looks pretty neat. It looks a lot like Super Meat Boy. I could get behind this. And initially, I thought the whole retro style graphics that kind of had like blue, green, and red tone to it with very abstract, I guess, sprites was pretty cool. It seemed like it had a lot of unlockables. This was also a game that was available on Steam. And it had quite a bit of content in it, quite a bit of challenge. But for whatever reason, I just could not really get behind it. I've seen other people in my comments, such as Darius Truxton, comment how they really could not get behind Slime Son. I know there's been a few updates to it and stuff like that, and you can play as different characters and stuff. But there was just something about this game that really left little to be desired. I don't know if it was just because the repetitive gameplay of just dying and starting over, dying and starting over, and just the stages were much more um bland than super meat boy like super meat boy i think is such a terrific game and it fits this type of game style and genre perfectly the stages of it are all unique they all each have like you know fun little elements to it and this one just kind of felt like a basic rehash a reskin of what super meat boy was and for whatever reason i just personally couldn't get behind it i felt a little underwhelmed with slime sound after playing it for quite a while now, F-Zero is one of those games that myself and a lot of other people are clamming for to be on the Nintendo Switch. And when Fast RMX initially came out on the Nintendo Switch library, there was no Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. There was no racing games at all. This was the first one. And this came out in a time period where when a Switch game came out that week, one or two of them were coming out at a time as opposed to now. So many are coming out at once that it's hard to keep up. You bought it. Fast RMX was one of the few options that was available after the Switch launch, and I was like, you know what? I want something new to play. Let's pop it in. And I played the Nintendo Wii U version of Fast RMX, which is Fast Neo Racing. Let's check this out. Let's see how it holds up. And to me, it just felt really clunky, like an arcade 1990s racer game by Sega. Not that they didn't have any good ones. There were some good racing ones, but this one just felt a little kind of strange in my opinion the graphics felt a little outdated there is some online play this is one of the earliest online multiplayer games for the nintendo switch but honestly good luck finding people to play against the online mode in my opinion since day one has always kind of been non-existent there was one time when i tried to play against wood from beat em ups in an online match and I just could not figure out how to get a hold of him and reach him and we're both on each other's friends list so Fast RMX really had no replay value for me once I initially played through a couple of the circuits because I really don't have any way to play with at home and I can't get behind the solo player experience of Fast RMX uh, I mean once Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came out that was it for this game I put it away now, I'm going to go ahead and read some of your comments in regards to some of these games. There's one that I actually I agree with a couple of people on here. Chad Milliken says, I didn't care for has-been heroes, just couldn't get into the game at all. And then we also had another user that said has-been heroes as well, which Scott Henderson says, has-been heroes. I picked it up when it came out a long time ago, and while it tried something new, I felt it got repetitive fast, and some parts were annoying having you memorize level layouts just to get through they advertise as an rpg so i was hoping for more of a chance to grind and make my characters really strong but i just didn't get any of it out of it so you are absolutely correct i got has been heroes actually on launch date the price actually is what incentivized me for it it was just 20 bucks you couldn't beat that and this also came out early on the nintendo switch's lifespan where not too many games were out at the time I played it at PAX South last year and it seemed promising so I went ahead and picked it up. You can't beat it for 20 But yeah, it, it doesn't really play as an RPG. It does have some elements, but it's more like a roguelike with permadeath. If you die, you're starting over from square one. Your characters don't upgrade or keep their abilities. And it was just overall a pretty frustrating game. And initially after the first week or two of playing it, I put it down. I have tried to go back and play through it and stuff, but I just honestly cannot get behind it. I love the graphical style of it, and I love everything about it. It's just, I, I don't want to sound like I'm weak as far as being a gamer goes, but the difficulty just really had 
made the whole game overall experience, the whole overall experience of the game, very difficult for me to get into it. And I'm sure that's what Chad and Scott had the same problem. Now, another game I did mention in my top worst Switch games was WWE 2K18. I personally could not believe how unplayable that game was, how broken it was, the frame rates, how disappointing that a WWE game was produced rather horribly and ported over to the Nintendo Switch. A couple of people did comment. We had Mike Tisione, if I'm pronouncing your name, I'm wrong, I'm my bad. WWE 2K18, literally unplayable. Every three or four matches, it freezes, and I need to close out the game. So, yeah, if a game doesn't play, it crashes a lot, that's bad business. And then we also had uh, another person, Albert Exodus, who has a channel as well. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check out his channel. It's a very small channel, and I think he deserves a few eyeballs on his content. He says, WWE 2K18, thankfully, I had a heed your advice. Hopefully next year they'll make a better port with 2K19. See, I think initial impression with this game is where this should have went. They screwed it up. It came out and people were like, wow, this is horrible. I think they messed up the initial impression and it's going to take a lot of effort for them to build up that trust for the next WWE port on the Switch. If they even do it. They would be stupid if they didn't because of how successful it's selling. But... I'm going to keep uh, my distance and find out if it works first, actually. Now, Kent Maddox mentioned Sonic Mania for not getting a physical copy. So, that is a good point. Just because you're disappointed in a game doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. I think there's absolutely no excuse why Sonic Mania didn't get a physical release at all on any of the three platforms. It was begging to be it. Now, I, I have a actual custom Nintendo Switch case of Sonic Mania. And this would be like what the real thing would be. And there's no reason why we did not get this. It was a fantastic game. A nice callback to the original Sonic games. And was a lot better than the other game that a lot of people, myself included, were disappointed in. Which was Sonic Forces. And Eric Schrimscher, he says, Gotta say Sonic Forces just didn't do a good job. I tried but couldn't get into it. I played through Sonic Forces to review and it really felt like I was just rushing through the entire game just to get it over with. Sure, there was some good stuff in the game. Like, I think some of the levels were really well designed. It was cool that you can make a custom avatar to play as. But overall, the experience just felt flat. It made me want to play Sonic Adventure 2, which is a much better game, or Generations, or even Colors. Uh, this game just felt completely outdated, and I was like, wow, two Sonics in one year? It proves that maybe less is more when it comes to the Sonic franchise. Uh, Sonic Mania left the Sonic brand on a good note and then Sonic Forces just kind of put it back down to mediocrity in my personal and humble opinion. Now back to a game that I bought early on on launch date was 1-2 Switch. This looked like it was going to be the new Wii Sports, Wii Party, Wii Fit, you know like the, the tailor-made Nintendo app for the Nintendo Switch. It should have been a pack-in quite honestly because for the price that it was when it came out really wasn't worth it. I experienced this game with Kristen. We did a let's play and then I showed a review and while it was initially fun, once you breeze through the game in about an hour, you're really left with no content at all. It's a fun little quirky party game as far as using the joy cons go, but I just envisioned in my head something that was a little bit more uh, fleshed out and something more um, tangible, something that would be a lot more fun, but honestly it was a half-baked idea it seemed like it was more like a tech demo that just didn't have that fun factor that nintendo usually has in some of these games i mean there were some good ideas on it but overall it kind of bit the big one and now i got one more comment i'm gonna read it even though i do know it's going to have open a can of worms it's about xenoblade 2 we all saw in my review how i felt about it that i really could not get into it that i felt that the battle system was complete crap and it met with some backlash. The review got some thumbs downs, but this guy actually follows a little bit of what I said in agreement to Xenoblade. So he says, Xenoblade 2, I bought it into the overhype. Good game, but wasn't a game of the year contender or better than Skyrim, like many claimed. Had my hopes too high. Not to mention there are 10 chapters and as of chapter eight, I'm still getting tutorials on how to do things. At 10 hours, I was told I didn't give it enough time. At 40 hours, I was told it'd get better. On my 100th hour now, it's still just all right. Nothing groundbreaking by any means. And that is the point. At 10 hours, 
people are saying 10 hours of a game is not enough for anything. 10 hours is actually a lot of time for a game. If by 10 hours you're not feeling a game, you're not enjoying it, and you have to tell somebody, hey, it gets better after 10, it gets better at 40, I'm sorry, in my personal opinion and experience, that's not a great game. Usually you could tell within an hour or two if you're gonna enjoy the game. It's not saying that it's a bad game. Just like I said, I'm not saying Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a bad game. I'm just saying I couldn't get into it. So yeah, I'm not gonna try to sit down and enjoy a game and it take 40 hours for it to get that way. It's a niche title that only a certain amount of people would like. And guess what? Opinion is something of this world. Just because you don't like somebody's opinion doesn't mean you need to get bent out of shape for it. In my opinion, I hold that same regard. For people to say, oh, a game gets better after this hours, this many hours, this many hours. Dude, how many hours? Come on. So yeah, I feel Xenoblade 2 was actually a little disappointing too for me. The most disappointing game that I could think of right now on the Nintendo Switch was one that I personally thought was being hyped up. Nintendo was hyping the hell out of arms leading up to it. I got a review copy of it and actually did some let's plays of it a couple weeks early. And... No matter how much I tried to get into it, I just couldn't. First of all, the tacked on motion controls, I'm glad they gave you the option to take them off because those are horrible in my book. Uh, the character designs and everything seemed cool. Seemed like there was a lot of personality. The idea seemed neat. But once I played it and just didn't like the overall controls of it and played through the entire story, one time I was like, I'm done. They've, sure, they've been adding a lot of free updates and characters here or there. But this is a, the one game that I probably will not be going back to anytime soon. Uh, you either get your ass kicked by the computer or it's way too easy and it's a button masher. Uh, online play is okay, I guess. But even then, I feel like the online community for ARMS is not as big as, say, like a Splatoon or even a Mario Kart 8. So there was like a lot of underwhelming feeling that I had with ARMS. And some of you guys actually said the same thing so Jorge Morales' arms got boring really fast and I can agree with that once I played through it I had no desire to go back and complete it to get all the rest of the arms there's unlockable arms that you can get for every character I wasn't behind it now John Riggs who also has a channel link down in the description below he's really really good does open cart surgery he goes arms especially for a Nintendo IP something was missing from it but I'm not sure what I feel that way about Pikmin 2 though, and there's several who love that game. Now he has a point. For a Nintendo IP, ARMS just felt kind of like like something was missing. It didn't have that Nintendo Genesa Qua behind it that really captures, I guess, the atmosphere and makes you pay attention to the characters and get invested in the story. It really felt like another tech demo in my opinion, like a, a cheap knockoff of Punch Out from the Wii and you know with extendable arms i think honestly the extendable arms and most control the whole gimmick of the arms coming out just kind of really soured it on on people myself included and then we also had one more comment michael steven federanko says arms comes to mind terrific two-player couch game but the solo campaign was limited. There seemed to be no backstories as to why these characters were competing in the tournament. So when I competed the game with one character, I had little reason to go back and complete it with others. So yeah, like he said, once you complete it one way through, there's no real desire to go back and try it out with other characters. Backstories would have been nice. I know they had like a little bit of autobiographies and I believe like online and different areas of the game and stuff, but there was no like true real good story behind it the tournament didn't feel like it had any important meaning behind it other than to be the champion so i mean i guess that's basic enough of a idea but yeah um it is great for two-player couch co-op as he mentioned but single play single player just felt a little underwhelming period so yeah that's my disappointments if you guys have anything that you're disappointed in probably my channel comment down below Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I'll see you guys soon. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, comment, like. See you on the next one. Peace out.